At the core of any great brand is a great logo and Steve Jobs paid over $100,000 for his logo by Paul Rand for his company Next. The things that make a great logo are not typically what you would expect and in this video we are talking about the five hidden qualities that make a great logo that not everybody talks about. Yo people, I'm Matt Thorne aka Sketchy Media on a mission to help you build a disruptive brand that impacts the universe. Back when we started our journey with Reboxed, the designer in me had a real anxiety. Fundamentally, a branding change further down the line can cost a considerable amount of money. In our case with Reboxed, we were having to order a ton of packaging and the worst thing in the world would be to deploy a logo on thousands of boxes to only hate it later. The foundation of a good logo is something that is unique, simple, something that is scalable and that can work well on black and white. But this video is more about the hidden qualities. Quality number one, great logos can be recreated by hand. Well if you think of any logo, whether it's the Nike swoosh or the Apple logo, even the Adidas three stripes, chances are you'll be able to record it by hand. See when I was at school the cool thing to do was to draw logos on your notebooks. I specifically remember drawing the No Fear logo. While that No Fear logo is actually difficult to replicate, those that you could remember off the top of your head are always the best. So the test that I like to do with people and clients is show them a logo for literally 20 seconds and then see if they can draw it by hand. The chances are if they can't it's probably too complex or too intricate and it needs simplifying the biggest challenge for designers today is making something that is both unique and memorable and the thing is the most simple structures today have probably already had a meaning taken somewhere of some sort quality two and another one that not many people talk about it is a logo should be structurally sound when it comes to structural soundness we're talking about balance we're talking about symmetry see humans we're attracted to organization we're attracted to balance our eyes are drawn to symmetry and a lot of this is even done on a subconscious level. What structural soundness does is it communicates clarity and order and makes something feel solid. Any business worth their weight today wants to feel solid and that logo can be the foundation for that perception. Imagine looking at a restaurant where the sign is using like a crazy wacky font and then you compare that to something that is even using something as simple as Helvetica. The difference in feeling and your perception of each of those restaurants will be completely conveyed by that font and really we want to be looking and feeling like Helvetica not Papyrus or Comic Sans. The hardest thing about being a logo designer today is keeping up with the trends and the modern forms as well as creating something that is expressive and unique. Unpopular opinion, I loved the London 2012 graphics. I think it was bold and daring and I actually think there was beauty in the polarization that it created. I tried to do something similar with Rebox. I tried to really push the mold out on the logo initially, coming up with something geometric and something really out there. To be honest, it's very, very difficult to do. It requires a ruthless dedication to refinement and something that takes a lot of time. Even the most craziest logos, although they look like they haven't been really well refined, they have. I had a similar challenge with a radio station, Pyro Radio. I wanted to create something geometric embedded into the word mark that could be broken apart and be a system in itself. It was actually really difficult to architect, but I think the end result after hours and hours of refinement was worth it. So quality three, I really faced this as a founder and a designer of the logo for my own business. The client or the founder needs to love the logo. Every day I'm working on this business, it needed to be something that was actually close to me. I needed to feel like I loved the logo. And this is the same for designing for other clients. Every logo I've done for someone else, it was one of my top priorities was to make them really love it. And the messages I got back from clients when they've seen their logo printed on bomber jackets, on a radio microphone, and them saying, oh, you've really brought this brand to life, I love it. That is ultimately the level that we wanna hit as designers. When you're dealing with something on a day-to-day -day basis, that thing needs to not get old. You really have got to love it. There's nothing worse than falling out of love with your logo. And I am three years into our Rebox logo, and even to this day, I love it. Logos are very subjective. It's very difficult to make a guess on whether or not that person is even gonna love that logo. So the best way I believe to get that 
they're gonna love this logo feeling is to go really heavy up front on the discovery session. You need to figure out what motivates them, what they like the look of, you know, the things that they would kind of engage with, you know, go heavy on the mood boards and really draw out as many references of inspiration from them as you can. For most companies where you're not working directly with the founder, it probably doesn't matter so much what the rebrand looks like as long as there's company buy-in. The next quality that no one talks about is its remarkability. What do we mean by remarkable? Well, quite simply, it means, is it worth talking about? Is it worth making a remark? The thing is, great logos are often intriguing, ambiguous, but also remarkable. With our Rebox logo, we turned it into a neon sign in the office and a part of the end of the logo actually looked quite phallic. And every time someone sees it now, we often get a phallic remarks about it, you know, which could not be the best thing in the world, but the way I see it, people are actually talking about it. The fact that people are looking at it and making a remark means it's worth talking about. The last quality that I think is the most important and it is timelessness. It can stand the test of time, much like an old classic hit record. We all talk about trends and a lot of designers try and follow modern approaches and trends, but I think it's more important to look for something that is trendless and timeless. Chasing trends is very rarely a great thing to do. I think we can take cues from trends and we can look at how a modern logo would look. But the truth is, things like Nike, things like Apple, those logos are timeless. They work in any era. If you look at something like Apple, I think the style around the logo, you know, the colors when it was glossy, those things all can kind of move, but a great logo geometrically and structurally stays the same and no period can make it feel out of place.